All right, so I'm gonna start this one again, and because I recorded the first one, I noticed that it wasn't even showing my face. Um, uh, but uh, earlier in my previous video, that was didn't come up, didn't come out really good. I'm I'm starting all over. Uh, so I noticed that I don't have slides for session four, that four. Um, so for tonight's class, I'm gonna try this. Uh, Thank God I had my tripod delivered uh, last night, so I'm able to uh, see if I can come up with uh, hopefully something that can help you with session 4.4, okay? And session 4.4 talks about properties of rational functions, okay? Um, and what we're going to look at there is, uh, now when we talk about rational functions, we, we do know that um, we have rational numbers, right? When you say a rational number, number you're talking about, say two, to, two over three or uh, five over six, these are rational numbers. In the same way, we, we can have rational uh, functions. And in that, in that sense, we're talking about a polynomial being divided by another polynomial. So if I have this polynomial, uh, P of X divided by Q of X, uh, where Q of X is not equal to zero, then this is a rational uh, function. You know, have one polynomial divided by another polynomial, okay? An example of that would be x squared, um, say, x squared plus minus four, well, sorry, uh, x squared minus four, yeah, uh, say, x squared plus x plus one. Uh, this is a rational function, okay? Uh, I can also have x3, x to the three, um, say 2x squared plus one. This is also another rational function and so forth and so forth. So what we're gonna be looking at is uh, talking about how to find, first we're gonna try and talk about how to find the domain of a rational function, okay? Domain of a rational function. Um, and with that, um, assuming that I have a, uh, a rational function 2x squared minus four, I have f of x equals 2x squared minus 4 divided by x plus x plus 5, okay? x plus 5. Um, how do I find a domain of this? Uh, basically, to find a domain here, my goal is to find f, any, you know, uh, isolate or eliminate any number that will make this uh, 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 function uh, undefined. So if I looked at it, um, I equate the denominator to zero. So it means that x cannot be what? Equal to zero. I mean, x cannot be equal to minus five because if it was, then the denominator becomes negative, um, it becomes zero. Uh, and so my domain is going to be the set of all x set that x is not equal to minus five. This is no different from um, how you've been finding domains from the beginning of the semester, right? So this is how you find the domain of the rational function. Um, uh, and also that uh, you, you have to make sure that the rational function is in its lowest term, uh, meaning that there are no common factors, lowest term. So if there were any common factors, you were, uh, you will factor them out and then what? Cancel them out. Um, so in this case, there's no common factor. So the, the, the domain we straightforward is, uh, is negative five, okay? Let's look at another example here. Um, what if we have one, uh, what if we have this function here? Out of x equals one over x squared minus four, right? x squared minus four. Hopefully this is clear. Uh, but to find the domain of this guy here, uh, we're gonna equate the denominator to zero and solve for x. And so if we do that, then we're saying that uh, x cannot be equal to, uh, cannot be equal to plus or minus one, two. So the domain obviously is a set of all x said that um, s is not equal to plus or minus two. Okay. So that is your domain for this. Now, mind you, looking at it, you see that this is already uh, in, in its lowest term, meaning there's no, there's no, um, you can't factor or you can't cancel anything out. So lowest term, okay? 
Um, so that is um, that is how you find your domain uh, of a rational function. Okay, um, and I'll give you the last example here. Uh, how do we find the domain of uh, how do we find a domain of say r of x? x squared minus 1 over x plus 1. Now, if we look at this, I mean, the domain obviously here is, uh, is uh, x is not equal to what? Negative 1, right? Because negative 1 will make this uh, uh, rational function undefined, okay? But then, then you ask, is this in the lowest term? No, it's not. Because we can factor the top one, which is x plus 1, and x minus 1. And so then if we, we have this, your temptation is that you're going to cancel out this, right? You're going to cancel out um, this guy. And so um, your answer, if you did, is going to be x uh, minus 1. Now, note that when x minus 1, this is not, not a rational function. Okay? So it is this is different, and even though you know it's been said that you have to reduce it to the lowest term, you cannot reduce it when it takes away the the rational function. Okay, so uh, and obviously, if you want the fun, the domain of this function here is a set of all real numbers, right? Which is different from this here. So always make sure that when you when you cancel out, if it's in the common term and you cancel out, you're gonna have something at the bottom. Okay gonna have something here that you can equate to zero. Okay, so uh, that is that. Um, um, I'm gonna talk about this thing here about limits, right? I'm gonna just, if we have y equals one over x squared, all right? Um, if you plot this graph on your calculator, um, um, we'll have this is what the graph will looks like. It comes from here to here, and it comes from here to here, right? This line, uh, this line here is x equals zero, and this line, line here is what? y equals zero, okay? Um, in calculus, you will hear terms like, uh, uh, as x approaches zero, because this, is, this, this, this here is x, right? Is a line y equals zero. Okay, so in calculus, you'll be, you be hearing things, you'll be hearing stuff like uh, as x approaches, as s approaches zero, right? It approaches zero, this is your zero, right? The function f of x, whatever this function here is, f of x approaches infinity. Okay, so here we'll say as x approaches, as x approaches, uh, zero from the left. You know, you put a sign here saying that x is approaching zero from the left. f of x approaches what? Positive infinity. Same way here, you talk about if this is the function here, and this is the function of uh, f of x is equals one over y squared. Okay. Here again, you say it's as as x approaches, as x approaches zero from the right f of x approaches also approaches positive infinity okay or on the other hand you can also say as f of x approaches zero x approaches infinity okay because x x approaches Because x approaches, um, f of x approaches what? This value here, right? f of x approaches zero, then x approaches what? Infinity. So this is something that you can see in your, in your book. Um, as we say, as the limit as, and this, is, this can be written as the limit as x approaches um, approaches zero, f of x um, equals 
f of x um, equals zero. Okay. As f of as x approaches in positive infinity, f of x equals zero. The limit as f of x approaches zero. Uh, the limit as x approaches infinity, f of x equals zero. Okay, so you'll be seeing that. Um, and I'll kind of leave that for you to go and, um, and, and read it in your, in your notes or in your, in your book, okay? Because um, I want to make this, this video uh, really short for the things that you really need to know. Uh, so we're going to dive into uh, uh, what we talked about. How do we find a, the a vertical asymptote of a rational number, okay? How to find the rational how to find a vertical asymptote vertical asymptote of a rational rational function okay um, so a rational function obviously is we say it's r of x equals p some polynomial divided by some other polynomial okay uh, and of course we say this has to be in the lowest term, okay? Uh, the vertical asymptote is, is the same as saying that, um, the vertical asymptote is the same as saying that x equals r, or meaning r minus, x minus r equals zero, okay? Uh, and that will be in your denominator, okay? So basically, uh, to make it easier here, Anytime you're asked to find a vertical asymptote, what it's asking you to do is find, it's almost like finding your, 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 your domain, okay? It's like finding your domain. Now, to find your, your, your what do you call it, your vertical asymptote, it's the same as finding your x-intercept, okay? Those are the zeros of your polynomial, right? So if you look here, if you're to find the zero of, if you're to find a zero of uh, this polynomial here, then we say y equals zero, right? Okay, and then you solve for whatever p of uh, p of x will give you. Okay, and this will give you this will give you your vertical asymptote, um, and so your vertical asymptote is the same as like finding your zeros. And normally, when you're asked to find your vertical asymptote, is the same as finding your what? The domain of your denominator. Okay, so uh, let me see if I have a quick example here for uh, let's find the vertical asymptote of f of x equals 3x plus x plus 3 over x minus 1. Okay, um, let's find um, uh, 2x squared over x squared minus 4, I think. Oh no, x. And then we have x squared, uh, 3, we have x squared minus 9 divided by x squared. Um, plus 4x minus 21, plus 4x minus 21, okay? So, to find the, the vertical asymptote here is, like I said, is the same as finding the domain of, um, of this, uh, um, this function here. So, to find, here, for the first example, one, uh, the vertical asymptote here is what? x equals one. Right, and and so uh, meaning that if I have my normal line here, x equals one, is here. My vertical asymptote is this guy. So if I draw, if I have any function, it's gonna look like this. Okay, it's gonna look like this. Meaning a graph, any graph of a function will never touch the the vertical asymptote. It will come close to it, but it will never touch it. So my vertical asymptote is this line, okay? And so it's equating the denominator to what? one. And, and obviously, if you look into this, this one here, 
uh, it is already in its lowest term. So we didn't bother to uh, find this in the common terms. Okay, here is the same thing. There's no, there's no common terms here, right? And, and so we solve for what? X squared minus, minus four, which will give us uh, uh, plus or minus what? Uh, sorry, it'll be X, X equals uh, plus or minus what? Two. So your vertical asymptote uh, is negative two here and it's what? Two here. So this is your vertical asymptote. So if you have any graph, will never touch the asymptote. It's gonna come this way, it's gonna come this way, um, it's gonna come uh, it's gonna come this way, it's gonna come that way. You'll never touch it. Same way here, right? Um, right? So this is, this is how, what is defined by uh, vertical asymptote and how you find your asymptote, right? Um, again, uh, let's look at this, right? Here we'll look at, and we, if you look at the top, uh, we can simplify that is three X, three plus, X plus three, X minus three, right? And dividing by, what are the factors here? What are the zeros here? This is the same as saying that the X plus, x plus seven and x minus three, right? So x plus seven, x minus three. There's a common term here. And so we can cancel out this. This still remains a rational function. It's still a fun some polynomial divided by some other polynomial. So our, our vertical asymptote, vertical asymptote is going to be what? X is gonna be x equals one, minus seven. So if you were to draw your line, um, assuming minus seven is here, this is your vertical asymptote, right? So that is how you find your, your vertical asymptote, okay? All right. And as, as you watch the video, you can always uh, ask questions, right? Um, I'm gonna kind of simplify this thing for you so that you can understand it and uh, follow through it. So next thing what we're going to do is we're going to talk about horizontal asymptote. Okay. Uh, and there are, there are, there are some rules for finding horizontal asymptote. Okay. Horizontal asymptote. That is horizontal asymptote. So let's see how do you uh, find horizontal asymptote. Um, before we do that, I'm gonna give you the, um, uh, I'm gonna give you the options uh, to look at or the conditions actually, not the options, the conditions to look at um, to determine what a horizontal asymptote is, okay? Um, so the rational function uh, we know is, and I'm gonna write this down, equals a to the n, x to the n, plus a n minus one, x minus one, plus a to the one, right, plus a naught divided by b m minus b n s to the m plus b m minus one x minus one all right plus b one x plus b nine okay so the conditions are that if uh, now why you look at this exponent here okay this is the exponent here is n the exponent here is m so first condition is one. If you have, if n equals m, sorry, if m is less than m, um, meaning if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then, uh, 
here we're saying that the degree of the numerator is less than the degree less than the degree of the denominator. Okay, then to find the horizontal asymptote here, um, the line y equals zero is your horizontal asymptote. Okay, when if if n is less than, if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, the line y equals zero is your uh, horizontal asymptote. So that any time you are asked to find the horizontal asymptote, the first thing you want to do is that you want to inspect the degree of the numerator and the degree of what? The denominator. Okay, so that's the first condition. The second condition is if, if the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator, um, then we're saying that the line y equals a n divided by dm is your horizontal asymptote, is your horizontal asymptote, okay? If the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, all you have to find is you look at the, you look at the, the rational function, you take the leading coefficient here, and divided by the leading coefficient of the denominator. So if I have, uh, and we'll look at example, we'll look at example. So if I have two uh, x squared plus uh, plus x squared plus uh, x plus four divided by um, uh, s cubed plus two x squared plus plus 3x minus 1, to find, a, to find a horizontal asymptote of this example here, right? Because the, number, because the degree of the numerator is the same as or equal to the degree of the denominator, right? We take the leading coefficient of the numerator, which is what? 2. The leading coefficient of the denominator is what? 1. So here your horizontal asymptote uh, is what? 2. Um, I'll keep on walking because I'm working whilst I'm recording this video as well. So my computer is on and I, I can uh, see if somebody needs me. Uh, um, now, the, other, the third condition is, the third condition three is if we have n equals n plus one. Now, n equals n plus one, meaning if the degree of the numerator is what? One more than the degree of the denominator. That's what this statement means, right? The degree of the numerator is one more than the degree of the denominator. We say this asymptote. We say that uh, um, this has an oblique asymptote. We say that the line y equals mx, uh, we say that the line a plus b is an oblique asymptote. Oblique asymptote. And Now, this is the quotient found by dividing uh, the two uh, uh, rational functions, okay? This is the quotient found by dividing whatever the two rational functions are, and then we're going to look at an example, okay? So anytime you have a condition, if you're given, 
if you're given a rational function and you're asked to find the asymptote, right? Um, you're asked to find either the horizontal or the oblique asymptote. You look at what the, 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 you inspect the degree of the numerator and then you inspect the degree of the denom denominator. Whatever condition that they fall in um, is what determines what, uh, what the asymptote is going to be. So we're saying that when you have uh, the degree of the numerator is one more than the degree of the exactly one more than the degree of the denominator, then you have an oblique asymptote. Okay, the oblique asymptote is is uh, is you get our oblique asymptote by solving uh, by dividing the uh, the two rational functions. Okay, obviously we said the rational function is uh, p of p of x divided by y. So this would be your oblique asymptote when you divide, this is the quotient, where you divide P of X divided by Q of X. That is your quotient. And we'll look at how you get that, okay? Now, the fourth condition is if I have N is, if N is greater than, is greater than or equal to M plus two, If n is greater than, if the, num the, if the degree of the numerator is, tr is two or more uh, times greater than the degree of the, the denominator, then here there is no, there is no horizontal or oblique asymptote. So if if you are asked to find um, to find a horizontal asymptote, again, your first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna inspect the degree of the numerator of that uh, uh, rational function, and if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, and then you will say that the line y equals what y equals zero is your is your horizontal asymptote. Basically, that means that your x-axis is your horizontal asymptote. Right, the x axis is the line y equals zero, so you want to pay attention to that. Okay, um, if, if the, the degree of the numerator is the same as the degree of the denominator, then the leading coefficient of the numerator divided by the leading coefficient of the denominator is your horizontal asymptote. Okay, now the condition where the, 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 the degree of the numerator is one more than the degree of the denominator, it's exactly one more than the degree of the uh, denominator, then we're saying that the line y equals mx plus b, if you see the line y equals mx plus b, that is a linear what? linear function, right? So the, this mx plus b is an oblique asymptote. And how do you find an oblique asymptote? You use the long division method to divide those two um, rational function that is given to you. And then its quotient is, will be your, your oblique asymptote. Okay. Now, when you have the degree of the numerator um, greater than or equal to two, okay? So it's either two or it's more than two uh, than the degree of the denominator, then there is no horizontal asymptote or there is no oblique asymptote, okay? so. Let's look at some examples here. Uh, hopefully, let me see if I can move this thing here a little closer. Uh, I, I don't know that is gonna help, but uh, maybe when I send it, you can, zoom, you can zoom through it and see exactly what is written on the board, okay? Uh, this, is, this is definitely something that I'm trying to improvise and get something to you and uh, Hopefully that, that helps. And we can talk about this on, uh, on online uh, once, once we log in. Okay, so let's, let's uh, pick a uh, couple of uh, examples here. Uh, finding a horizontal asymptote. So if we have 
find the horizontal asymptote, right? Find horizontal asymptote. Okay. Here, if we have 4x cubed minus 5x plus 2 divided by 7x plus 2x to the 4 minus 3x. Okay. Here you have you have this rational function here, and you're asked to find the horizontal asymptote of this uh, uh, rational function. You go back to the conditions uh, that you were given, and clearly, if we look at this, we know that n is less than what? m. So the first condition is what we're going to use. This means that with the line y equals what? 0 is your horizontal asymptote. Okay? And, and, and now obviously, of course, I mean, you, this can be explained. Uh, this can be explained to be that you will use the power function, uh, which we have seen before, that this equals n to the, to the n, right? Uh, so we will approximate the top polynomial function to the 3 divided by um, to the 5, okay? We, we use the power function. The behavior of the top polynomial can be approximated or can be we can use a power function to show the behavior of the top polynomial. We can use a power function again to what? Show the behavior of uh, uh, the, 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 the numerator, okay? So what you have here is, is gonna be four um, divided by seven to the two, uh, to the two right? To add seven x uh, squared. But again, here we're saying that as x approaches zero, uh, as x approaches infinity, all this function here, f of x, approaches what? Zero. Meaning that this over 7 is approaches, um, approaches zero. That is why we say the line y equals zero is your horizontal asymptote. So, um, if we have, you know, if you want to understand more of this, um, th that is... That is, this is how we came about the, the line y equals zero to be your horizontal asymptote. But again, always look at the condition. The condition is that the, the, the numerator, the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. So obviously we say the line y equals zero is your horizontal asymptote. Let me grab, let me grab some water. All right, so that is how you find horizontal asymptote. Clearly, we, knew, we, we looked at here, the degree of the numerator is three, the degree of the denominator is five. Obviously, the n degree of numerator is less than the degree of denominator, the line y equals zero is a horizontal asymptote. That's all you have to say, okay? Um, Let's look at uh, let's look at if you have the rational function r of x equals eight x squared minus x plus two equals four x squared minus one. Okay, here again you inspect the the degree of the numerator and you inspect the degree of the denominator, meaning that n here equals m, right? So if n equals m, then we're saying that the leading coefficient of the, the numerator divided by the leading coefficient, meaning a n divided by what? b, b m is your horizontal asymptote. And the leading coefficient here is what? 8. And the leading coefficient here is 4. So your horizontal asymptote Equals what two? Okay, that is all you have to say, and that is all you have to do. 
finding the finding the horizontal asymptote degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, the line y equals zero is your horizontal asymptote. When you have a degree, when the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator are the same, are equal, then the leading coefficient of the numerator divided by the leading coefficient of the denominator is your horizontal asymptote. Okay? So that is that. And obviously, if you're going through it and you have any questions, you can always what? Can, you can always ask. Um, and uh, the third one. Um, so if you have. Uh, if you have so if you have like another example is if we have 2x uh, to the 5 minus x cubed plus 2 divided by x 3 x to the third power minus 1 okay here again, you're looking at this. You're looking at the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. You see that this the this condition uh, is what applies here, right? M plus two, meaning that the degree of the numerator is what two or more uh, times than what the degree of the denominator. Here, you, if you looked at it, the degree of the numerator is two more than the degree of the denominator. Okay, so here you rightly just say that there. There are no horizontal or oblique asymptotes, and you're done. Okay? Asymptote. Okay. You looked at it, you have 2s, 2s to the fifth power minus 3s cubed plus 2, and x cube minus one. Uh, the degree of the numerator is five and the degree of the denominator is, is three. So the condition that we have is the, the condition where the degree of the numerator is greater or equal to is what? M plus two, meaning the degree of the numerator is two or more uh, times the, the degree of the de de denominator. So obviously you just look at it and you say, there are no horizontal asymptotes. There are no horizontal or oblique asymptotes. Now, Let's look at where now um, uh, you have the condition where it is one, exactly one more. Uh, we have the, the condition where uh, we're looking at n, e n is equal to m plus one, meaning that the degree of the numerator is one more than the degree of what? The denominator. This is where you have an oblique asymptote. And we said, the oblique asymptote is the line y equals ax plus b. And this you get from um, doing the division by using the long division, okay? So if we have an example uh, this, uh, if we have an example that find a horizontal, the horizontal asymptote, if one exists, of the graph, right? Let's find the horizontal asymptote. Find Asymptote if one exists of this we have r of x equals four cube minus five plus two and seven. No, no, no. That's the wrong one. So we now we have this here. We have this rational function. Um, to the four minus x squared. 
divided by x cube minus x squared plus 1. So obviously here we're looking at a condition where n equals n plus 1. It is 4 is just one more, exactly one more than the degree of what? The denominator. Um, So, um, and you do this by finding the long division, okay? But if you look at this polynomial, you see that we're missing, we're missing what uh, other uh, values. We went from x to the 4 straight to x to the 2. There's no constant. So we can rewrite this by using what the placeholders. So I have 3x cubed to the 4 plus 0x to the cube, I mean 0x cubed minus x squared plus zero, zero x, okay? Um, there's no constant, right? It's plus zero. There's no constant term. And I'm gonna divide this by x cubed minus x squared. I don't have an x term, so I'll create my x term uh, plus one. So my long division is going to look like this. I'm going to divide this, divide this by this. So I have x, Q minus x squared plus 1 divided by, um, I'm dividing by to the 4 plus 0 s cubed minus x squared plus 0 x plus 0 if I want, right? So this is what you're going to be dividing with. Now, my goal is always to get rid of the first term. So what would I multiply by, by s cubed to get me um, 3s to the 4? So if I multiply here by x, x, 3x, if I multiply 3x by this, I'll get, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, 3s to the 4. So this times this will give me 3x to the 4. This times this will give me um, Oh, wait a minute. So let's rearrange this again. We're dividing by x cubed uh, minus x squared plus 0x plus 1. Right? We created our placeholder here. So this times this will give me this. This times this will give me uh, minus uh, 3 s cubed, right? 3 times 3s, 3s times negative uh, s squared, okay? This times this would give me uh, plus 0x, 0x squared, okay? And then this times this would give me plus 3x. I don't care about the constant because it's 0, okay? Now I'm going to subtract. This minus this will give me, that goes away, okay? Goes away, zero. This minus, this will give me minus three, that, right? Because it's zero minus this. And then I have minus, uh, minus x uh, uh, squared minus this. That is also gonna give me minus what? x squared. And then I have zero minus this. That is gonna give me what? Three X, okay? So then I wanna get rid of this guy. I wanna get rid of uh, uh, what do you call the negative uh, or the leading, the leading term. So if I multiply this because I'm subtracting, um, if I multiply it by three, that means that I have three times x cubed would give me x cubed, right? Three times negative x squared would give me negative three x squared. Three times this would give me zero x, 
right? Plus zero x. And then three times this will give me what? Plus three. Again, Sure. Oh, this shouldn't be this shouldn't be negative. That shouldn't be negative, let's see. Right. Oh, this should be positive because we're saying that this should be positive, not negative. Because we're saying that zero, zero s cubed minus what? Minus three s cubed. So that makes it positive. Okay. So here we're subtracting this minus this will go away. This negative two, negative s squared minus minus this will give us two x squared. Right. And then if you have this minus this, this will give us what? 3x and then plus what? 3. Okay. So basically what we're saying is this is our quotient. This is our quotient. Okay. Um, So that is our quotient, and remember we said that if you have n uh, equals n plus 1, then the quotient that you get is your, is your, your oblique asymptote. So your oblique asymptote is going to be, which is a linear function or linear equation. This is your oblique asymptote, okay? So um, that is pretty much of it. Um, and I can explain why, uh, why this is so by using the power function. We will say if x is approaching negative infinity, or either approaches negative infinity or positive infinity, what happens to, um, uh, to, to the values. But uh, for what is worth, this, when you do the long division, all your concern is, is your quotient. And obviously, this is your quotient. Okay? What you have, uh, meaning that, um, this can be written as 3x plus 3x plus plus 3, right? 3x plus 3 plus plus this. This is the remainder, right? Minus 3x plus 3 all divided by uh, all divided by this, right? So we're going to be dividing it by x cubed minus x squared plus 1. If you multiply this by this and you add it to this, you get this whole thing. So this is your quotient and that is your oblique asymptote. Okay? So hopefully this video will help a little bit. And then um, we'll talk about the rest uh, when we get online. So I'm going to post this in uh, when I'm done. I'll see how it looks. All right. See you later. Bye.